Hi everybody. Welcome to Tuesday's Facebook Live. I hope you're having a great day. If you're watching the replay, today's Tuesday, October 16th. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right place. Yep, looks like it. All right, so this week, my product of the week is the Feathers and Frost, and I have been um, curious to see what you guys think about this set. Some of you uh, mentioned this morning that it is on your wish list and it jumped out at me right away but it definitely took me um, a while to actually order it there was lots so many things in the catalog that were so cute hi everybody I can see you all now so yeah I think this might be one of those ones that we all have on our list but we haven't pulled the trigger yet and actually ordered it um, it's a really cute set I love um, open black line images that aren't too overly complicated and um, this one um, is great and also has some great sentiments so we're gonna make a card using um, this set and I'm actually gonna show you a few ways my dog is in here Charlie he's growling the the neighbor dogs of course have come out in the street as I'm doing Facebook live so he's in here and this is the only place he can see outside Charlie um, come on buddy Sorry. So anyways, I'm going to give just a couple more minutes for everybody to jump on. And while we wait, um, I, Charlie, he's distracting me. Huh. So anyways, what we're going to do today is make that card that I showed you. And I'm also going to show you two different color options because I think this set is designed for winter. However, I easily made a fall card, a Christmas card, and a uh, spring card. So I'm going to show you that. And then on Friday, I've got three more projects for you. So if you haven't joined my Facebook Friday before, make sure you hop over to my group page and join so that you will be there on Fridays. I do Facebook Friday every Friday at two o'clock central, and I will have three more um, feathers and frost projects for you over there. Hi, hi girls. Good to see you. Um, one reminder, just one shout out is the last time I'm going to remind everybody, but my, um, falling for leaves class to go today is the very last day to sign up for that. So make sure that you have, let me show you the little box that you have signed up for that tonight at midnight. It'll close. And I've got six beautiful fall themed projects using the falling for leaves. Um, so if you haven't done that, make sure you email me right away and get that link so that you will get it before it closes. I'm ordering everything in the morning and I start prepping tomorrow morning. So um, you have to have those orders in by midnight tonight. Okay, I think we're ready. Let me move this. Charlie has moved on. I don't know, he's still standing there a little tense, like he's ready to pounce. He's a schnauzer. I've shown you guys Charlie's picture before, but he is a schnauzer and schnauzers, you know, I have two schnauzers, but schnauzers are typically yappy dogs and my other schnauzer wasn't very yappy until charlie came along charlie was a rescue and charlie taught him the ways of schnauzer business and now oh we've got several two actually two yappy yappy dogs he's the band leader though he definitely leads the pack in yappiness all right let me get situated you can see the card that i showed you oh i gotta turn my fan off so that we don't shake um, you can see the card that I have here, and I'm going to do something that is called no line stamping. Oh, I ripped it again. No line stamping, which really isn't no line stamping the way that I'm doing it. It's kind of a light line. It is a way of stamping your image in a lighter color, and so that it isn't too... I don't know what's the word bold it's just kind of light can you see how that's light I did it in a smoky slate we're gonna stamp off and it allows those bolder colors to kind of pop off and you don't really see the black line as much as you do here on the bird so we're gonna do that and I've only done that before with watercolors but we're gonna do it of course with Stampin' Blends my favorite Okay, well, let's get started. I am gonna actually use Thick Whisper White today. I really like to use my Stampin' Blends on Thick Whisper White. 
And the reason is I find that if I get too heavy handed and crazy with my color, sometimes it starts to bleed out. But I find that on Thick Whisper White, that happens much, much less often. All right, now I have inked this beautiful foliage wreath in Smoky Slate, but I'm actually gonna stamp off over here and then come over here. Oh, behave, paper. And stamp right here. That way, it's very light. Can you see how light that is compared to where I stamped off that, that um, Smoky Slate? Super light, okay? All right, now, while we have, let's do all the stamping at once. I'm gonna use Memento, and you know, you could stamp off, you could do this lighter technique with a bird, but I found that he just got washed away when I did that, and I kind of lost those details. So I'm stamping him in Memento. And then the sentiment, now let's take a look at the sentiments here in this set. Um, joy to the world, season's greetings, and peace to your heart, hand stamped by, I thought that was a really cool stamp. We all need that stamp, right? Um, hand stamped by, that way you can put that on the back of your cards. This is the one I'm gonna use today. The gift of your friendship means so much, dot, 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 especially at Christmas. So we're gonna take off especially at Christmas. That way, that sentiment can really be used all year long. I really like to find ways to use my stamps for unintended purposes. You know, yeah, this is a Christmas stamp, but I'm gonna make it not a Christmas stamp. I'm gonna take a post-it and cover up that, that bottom line. What does it say again? Um, especially at Christmas. And then, let's see, I need to grab, I had it out, a blender pen. I'm gonna show you why in just a second. And we're gonna do this one, not a memento. We're gonna do it in basic gray, okay? Now, we've got those. So I peeled that off and now you can't even see, you can see how there's no ink there. And I'm gonna take my blender pen and remove the ink from those last two dot dots, all right? And that way we just have a period there. All right, so do you guys see what I did there? I think you can see. All right, now I'm gonna come over here and just stamp it right in the middle. We're gonna do all of our die cutting in a second. Okay, so can you see now it's just a sentence. It's not a partial um, sentiment, it's a full sentence. All right, let's color, and that's why I have my chair today, because I don't color very well standing up. I have to sit down. The colors I chose for our fall wreath are dark cherry cobbler, dark pumpkin pie, dark mango melody, and then just light daffodil delight. I felt like the dark daffodil delight just wasn't right. So we're going with light. A little brighter. Now, when you color with the, the light daffodil delight, you're still going to see those, um, those gray outlined marks of your stamp, the outline. That's okay. Let's see, I'm just going to do some. Now, when I go with my pumpkin pie, you'll see that it pretty much will cover up that gray line. I outlined it and then colored it in. You guys see that? That line just disappears and kind of gives it more of an abstract look. So now I'm gonna go through and do, let's see if we're doing, I guess we're doing four different colors for the leaf. So about a fourth of the leaves for each color. And no, I did not count them. I'm just gonna eyeball it. So go over that line. And you'll see in a minute when I show you the spring card, how, um, I don't know, I just really, really like the way it looks. It's kind of light and airy with that, that light, smoky slate. It is a very pretty stamp set. I agree, Sam. All right, Mango Melody. Gosh, I kind of got the shakes. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need some sugar, right? And that's what we tell ourselves. I need some sugar. This morning I got up, I had already made this card in this, the fall scene, and I decided that I wanted to make it 
for Christmas and for spring to show you guys how the same card could be taken um, and done just totally different. And it took me forever to get it done. I don't know, I kept messing up, ripping the paper, um, punching the wrong color, it was crazy. So don't look too closely at those other ones because they're not quite as good as the first one. I don't know, the whole day has been like that for me. You guys ever have days like that where you just feel like nothing is going right? Oh, I've been behind. All right, now I'm gonna take the cherry cobbler and I had originally thought I was just gonna do the berries, but I did end up going back and adding in some red leaves. And I don't know where you guys are, but um, I know some of you have some fall foliage already. And um, here in South Texas, we dream about fall foliage and we have about 10 trees that turn colors around Christmas <laughs> and that's it. No, I'm exaggerating, but not really that much. Our, our fall foliage, what we have, comes usually between Thanksgiving and Christmas and it's not a lot. I'm coloring in these little berries. Um, so I have to just make up these little fall scenes in my head. All right, now I've done, I've colored everything in nice and bright, but I felt like it was missing something. So I'm gonna take my blend and I'm gonna take the brush tip and I'm gonna flick through my lid. And this brush tip, <laughs> can you guys see? It's already messed up. It, it's not from what I'm doing right now, it's from a class, just letting you guys know. But I do this with a lot of my um, Stampin' Blends. See how you just take it on the edge of your marker and flick it. And that adds some more color, kind of fills in those white spaces. See, this one's perfect. When you're a demonstrator and you let people use your, your blends, you have to be prepared that they might not treat them with as much TLC as you would, and that's okay. That one's been loved quite a bit. Uh-oh, I forgot my light. All right, now I went round and round about the bird. What color, what color? No, Rachel, it doesn't wreck my, it does not wreck my blends. I promise you it has not. Now, if you did it every day, all day, yeah, sure. It's gonna wreck your blends, but you can see that one's perfect. And I have done it several times with this one. So, you know, it's a $4 marker. It's not like a, it's a $30 marker. <laughs> I don't feel very bad about doing it, but honestly, I haven't had any problem doing that yet. Um, the damage to my blends comes from my class usage. In my classes, they always kind of are, you know, used and abused, but that's okay. All right, now what I'm doing is the bird is gonna be cherry cobbler. This is cherry cobbler light. And I'm actually just gonna do the whole thing starting out in cherry cobbler light. If you don't wanna do that to your blends, if that makes you nervous, you can um, get your reinkers and squirt a little bit onto a block and take your, um, now this is dark right here. I'm gonna go over these little hash marks. Take your aqua painter and add some water to it and then flick it with your aqua painter. So that's always an option. But, like I said, I really have not had any issues at all. All right, so there he is. What I did is I added a I added dark down here on his belly because his belly would be dark. And then I came under his wing and added some more dark there. There might be a little bit of dark here. I try to think of where things overlap and that's where I try to add the darker part. And when things are round, always the bottom is gonna be darker. All right, so there's our bird. I think we're ready to cut. I think we are. Okay, so let's get the big shot. Now the chair needs to back out. And I'm gonna use, oh, I need to close my ink pads, you guys. I just set that down in that ink pad. I'm usually pretty good about that. I'm telling you, there's something weird going on today with me. Um, Aw, thanks, Kathy. I love doing these Facebook Lives with you guys, and I like doing this one earlier in the week. It's a little bit easier than the big Friday production. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know, it feels a little more fun for me. So I'm glad you like it. All right, now, 
here is our stamped image. Let me move this over so you can see. I am using the largest stitched square. And as you can see, it is a little bit smaller than the stamp, than the stamped image, but it'll be just fine. You'll see on Friday, I'm gonna use a scalloped square that fits it perfectly if you want to make sure you get it all the way around. But today, we're going with a stitched square. Let's take a look at it. Looks pretty good. Okay, now for the sentiment, and I did get a little bit of that flicking there going on that sentiment. I don't, I didn't mean to, but I kind of like it. This is the banner from the country, not country home, the, help me out you guys, what's it called? The farmhouse, farmhouse Christmas. This is in that framelit set and it is a stitched banner. Be still my heart, I love it. All right. We're gonna cut this out. Notice I have pushed this as far over as I possibly can because we're gonna put that bird there and he's gonna need all the room he can get. So I have put that as far over to the right as I can. I had to cut this out a couple of times to figure out just how far over. And I figured out that it needs to be as far over as you can go. All right, now let's get this guy out of the way. and making a mess. Now we're gonna cut him out. He's gonna have to be fussy cut. But if you're like me, and you don't mind fussy cutting, but you really don't wanna cut out those legs. So, if I can find him again, we're gonna bring him back over with that memento. And we're gonna stamp him right here. But see how he's gonna go off? I mean, he's really covering up that F almost. So I'm having to move him all the way as far over as I can. See how I just got part of that on there? But because we're gonna cut him out, this is called paper piecing. We're gonna cut him out and get him to, to fit on there and he'll just hang off a little bit. All right, so when you're fussy cutting, always cut all the extra cardstock off. That will help you. <laughs> Trisha, I hear that a lot, Trisha, that I use sets that people don't have. I know, I'm glad I'm finding you new things that you need. All right, so I'm gonna go right on the outside of that black line. Tips for fussy cutting include, cut off all the extra paper so that you're not trying to deal with a big chunk of paper. Use your sharpest, smallest scissors. Stay on the outside of the black line and don't turn your scissors. See how I'm turning the paper? Only turn the paper. Those are my tips for fussy cutting. And with practice, I know some people hate it and some people love it. I like to do it. And I only like to do it because I've done it a lot. You know, in the beginning I wasn't a big fan, but the more you do it, the better you get. All right, so there we go. Isn't that so cute? The gift of your friendship means so much. All right, so we've got that and we've got that. Before we put all those together, oh, I do need that big shot again. We're gonna do some embossing. And let me show you, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I embossed this white piece with the wood embossing folder, but I also added a little bit of gray ink just to kind of give it some dimension. I don't know, can you guys see that? Well, let me show you how I did it. And I actually had to do some trial and error with this. I love to put ink on my embossing folders. Yes, you can put ink on your embossing folders. If you have not done that before, you need to go play with your embossing folders and give it a try. Um, it washes right off. You take it to the sink, you rinse it off, done. It's totally fine. So I played around with it and that's what I did first is I inked it up and I put the paper in and I ran it through and it was way too dark. Didn't like it. So then I... Oh, I can't remember, I tried lighter, it, it wasn't working. So what I found works the best for this light, light, light little touch is to use my foam brayer and smoky slate. And I really don't even need that much. And I'm putting it on the side that has the Stampin' Up logo right here, Sizzix and Stampin' Up. I tried both sides, deciding, seeing which side I wanted. And that's the side I like the best. So see, I'm not doing a whole lot. You can't even see it. It doesn't even look like anything is happening. But I promise you it is. All right, now this is a piece of Whisper White, four inches by five and a fourth. 
I'm going to set it on there. I know, Trisha, me too. It really gets a, a lot of extra use out of your embossing folders. And before we had the lovely Buffalo check background stamp, this is how I made plaid with our striped embossing folder. All right, so I just ran it through and there it is. See that? Can you guys tell that it's grayish? It's kind of washed, you know, it's kind of got that, I don't want to say dirty fence look, but you know what I mean. It's been around. It's weathered. That's the right word. It's weathered. All right. We're going to start with some dimensionals here. One in each corner. And then we're going to add this piece right here. All right. There we go. You can kind of see the, the difference here between the whites. Now we're going to start putting this together. And I wanted to show you how so that you can learn from my mistakes. How I, um, in the beginning, I put these little sprigs here and they were sticking too far out. So they would not, um, my card would not fit in the envelope. So I realized that I need to kind of assemble it on the card front. So I am punching, this is the sprig punch or the reindeer antler punch. It really looks like reindeer antlers. Out of Mango Melody and Pumpkin Pie. And I'm gonna put it together here first. I'm gonna add my wreath. It's really heavy on the red. I'm gonna to try to kind of hide some of that red. And I decided to do it um, not the traditional square, but turning it so that it's a diamond or a rhombus. When I taught kindergarten, halfway about halfway through my 17 years of teaching, they said, it's not a diamond. You can't use the word diamond anymore. You have to use the word rhombus. So there you go, you just learned something new. Okay, now I'm just gonna get some glue dots. And I'm gonna put these on, sticking out, but not past my card edge. Okay, learn from my mistake, and make sure that you lay these in here so that they, you'll be able to um, put it in an envelope. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of alternate. Let's see, we'll do pumpkin pie on the bottom. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Janine, I appreciate it. And then these guys go out here. I just keep seeing reindeer antlers. What do you guys think? We gotta make some reindeer with this punch. All right, and now two dimensionals. And let's put that guy right in the middle. And there you have it. Now wait, 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 we're not done. No, 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 it's gotta have a bow. This is a Smoky Slate woven ribbon. And I felt like because the, the stamp's kind of airy with that super light gray, those that no line stamp, we needed a very airy and light bow. So I got the Smoky Slate woven ribbon. And I'm gonna cut off the long edge here. It takes a minute. We need some Jeopardy music. Well, I Slowly cut this edge off. You guys have seen me do this before, and it's fun. It also keeps, um, you know, like this this ribbon, if I was to add a, a big bow, it would create kind of some bulk there on your card, but this way you don't create the bulk. All right, so see what I'm doing? I, I cut off that edge, and now I'm gonna go through here, and I've got these fibers, pull out all the short ones, and then you're just gonna tie a bow. You know, the problem with doing Facebook Live at the end of the day, or late in the day, it's not the end of the day, but it's close to when I have to pick my daughter up, so I think of it as late in the day, is that I have ink all over my hands by now. Every time I go to do Facebook Live and I look like I've been painting a house or something. <laughs> if I do Facebook Live early in the morning, when I first start working, where's my take your pick tool? Then I wouldn't have ink all over my hands, but... I know it seems like you guys prefer the later time. All right, do you see what I did? I'm not I'm not even telling you what I'm doing. I made that bow. Cute, right? Glue dot and put it right underneath your bird. And that is the fall card. What do you guys think? I love that light gray with those bright um, bold colors. The cherry cobbler, 
the mango melody especially and that pumpkin pie now wait i promised you i had two others okay here's the christmas version and I have to tell you, again, remember this morning I was crazy, like everything was going wrong. I did this one first, and after I did this, I wished I had used these colors for the spring card, and I wish I had used the Call Me Clover blends. I, You know, we have so many different greens that you could really kind of just do all kinds of things. But anyways, this is Granny Apple. That's what I did here, Granny Apple, and then I used Granny Apple blends, and then Garden Green cardstock and granny apple for the sprigs there and then here's the spring card and I used um, soft sea foam and granny apple and then here the sprigs are lemon lime and granny apple and of course the bird is Highland Heather so look you guys it is a Christmas set however it's more than a Christmas set right <laughs> Trisha, bye budget. You know, this is a pretty affordable set. It doesn't have matching framelits, so that keeps the cost down. Um, you can use circles and squares with it, and you can fussy cut. So, and you know, I don't even know the exact cost of it right now. Um, let's see if I can locate it. It's in the catalog, the holiday catalog, towards the middle. It's $21, so that's pretty affordable page 30 all right now if you like this then you're definitely gonna like Friday Facebook Friday where I do three projects would you guys like to see a sneak peek of one of those projects I have them all ready you know I'm, I'm a teacher um, down in my bones I'm a teacher so I have to prepare and have everything ready would you guys like to see a sneak peek if you don't want to see a sneak peek you're you're gonna close your eyes okay because I, some of you like to be surprised. But here is one of the things we're gonna do on Friday. It's a 3D um, project, of course, obviously. I always have to do a 3D. We're gonna have a 3D and two cards. And the other two are gonna be Christmas, I promise. Um, but this, have you guys seen this? It's a double Ghirardelli. Um, hello, I've never seen these before. Found it at Target this weekend. So I was like, yes. So anyway, that'll be fun. And this is kind of, it could be Christmas, you could change it to red, or it could be any time of the year. Um, I used um, this paper from Country Home. Okay, so Friday, make sure you set a reminder and come back and find me on Friday. But on Fridays, I'm over on my group page. So if you guys haven't joined my group page, you really need to. Everybody's um, welcome. It doesn't matter if you're a demonstrator, if you're a customer, if you live in another country, it doesn't matter. Everybody is welcome. You just have to click join and then I approve you. Um, it's just an easier way for me to communicate with you guys than a business page um, because the business pages um, don't always show you everything that I post. But if you belong to the group, you can see everything that I post. All right, you guys, I will add the link to the group here in the description of the video. And hopefully I will see all of you on Friday. I will have these on the blog by tonight um, if you want a better look at them. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you on Friday. Bye, guys.